The following episode of the Maui Chamber of Commerce's Business Matters was originally broadcast on June 20th, 2023. Time now for Business Matters, brought to you by Mokulele Airlines. Now here's your host, Pam Tupop. Good morning, Pam. Hey, good morning, Gary. Great to have you back. Thank you. <laughs> Hope you had a wonderful vacation. I did, I did. Oh, I'm so glad to hear it. Well, welcome, everybody, to Business Matters. I'm Pamela Tumpop, president of the Maui Chamber of Commerce. And this morning, we are going to talk story with Council Member Yukile Sugimura. And we're going to hear from Marvin Moniz, our State of Hawaii Airport's district manager on all things airport. But this morning, I, I wanted to spend a little more time introducing you to Council Member Yukile Sugimura and go a little old school on you because uh, we've known her for many years. Years, if you think back, sometimes we don't realize how many public service positions that she's had. And of course, Council Member Sugimura is really well known for understanding and responding to the needs of her community. She goes above and beyond to connect with her constituents. She has a well known talk story session at the Upcountry Farmers Market. Of course, COVID hampered that, but she's back involved doing that again now that, you know, as soon as she could, she was back doing that. She's involved in many community groups, nonprofits, and organizations, allowing her to continually get updates and hear the needs of those she served. You know, prior to being on the county council, um, Yuki was, you know, a field representative for the late U.S. Senator uh, Daniel Akaka, as well as she represented U.S. Senator Maisie Hirono. Additionally, uh, she, you know, when she was becoming a, a council member, she really learned the fundamental Fundamentals of community engagement from also her work with U.S. Senator Daniel Inouye, uh, where she had a two-decade-long tenure as the coordinator of the Hawaii 3Rs program. And so it was a repair and maintenance program for public schools and Maui's Ready to Learn. And it was a program that also helped get school supplies for children in need. So working with his office, she had a long-standing relationship with Senator Inouye. And it was something that, I mean, I knew Yuki back in back in those days, a long, long time ago. And it was something that she, you know, all of those roles she was very actively engaged in. But also, you know, I think that it's important to remember that under the Kimo Ipana administration, she headed the Office of Economic Development. So she helped revitalize historic towns, uh, including Wailuku Town, by restoring infrastructure, and she created the marketing of cultural events. She helped with farmers' markets and the Friday town parties. And as a council member, she introduced and passed legislation to reduce impaired drivers, um, to increase road safety, reducing and reducing the uh, occurrence of deaths, banning smoking in vehicles with passengers under the age of 18, helped to facilitate streamlining of single-event liquor permits for nonprofit organizations, and work to secure funding for projects that are so important upcountry like the skate park and the Kula Playground, as well as many important central Maui and, and, uh, and or, you know, county improvement programs that required capital expenditures. And then this year, she has served as our budget chair. And I wanted to kind of go through that history a little bit because I think it's that history that also really made her an excellent candidate for budget chair this year. So with that, I, I'd love to welcome and say good morning, Yuki. How are you? Wow, Pam. I've got to get a copy of what you just read. You did a lot of homework. <laughs> oh, my God. I, you I'll know, I was never in charge. You, but... <laughs> what, oh, man. But one little correction. I was never um, the ex- director for the Office of Economic Development. Um, oh, the, with... they had a different title back then. Yeah, well, no, I wasn't in charge. I was, I was a, um, I was a specialist, I guess, economic development specialist. specialist. But my project area was Wailuku Town, with yeah. Mayor James Kimoapana. So that was my passion, and it still is today. But it, it you, you got it. Um, thank you so much. Well, and, you know, and, and it takes me back to, and I forgot to just mention that now, but it takes me back to the event, the first event that you started off with. 
and it was Ku'u Home O Wailuku. Oh my God. I remember God. all of yes. us serving uh, at that event, and I remember the 100 year anniversary celebration of, you know, where we recognized 100 people going back 100 years. Do you remember so that? Amazing. And all the research you with the so Maui amazing. News to find amazing <laughs> people in our community to honor? Yeah. Yeah, that's like Stephanie Ohigashi, right? The yeah. flashback to all those different things that we did, yeah. But um, since you since you mentioned um, um, Ready to Learn, which is back to school supply, August yeah. 3rd, I'm doing, I'm still continuing that. Um, I'm doing back to school supply with Maui Classic Cruisers group. And um, uh, Braden um, Kitagawa is, I think he's now, I think he's intermediate, but he's the student that's kind of driving that. I'm still awesome. doing collection of back to school supplies and it's going to be um, given to Maui United Way. So That's we are fantastic. still in motion for many of it. Yeah, well, you know, I, I know you. Once you're passionate about something, you, you continue to serve. <laughs> so imagine, imagine like how you. this accumulates, folks, over the years. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, but. Oh. Oh, well, I, I also want to congratulate you on, you know, a very successful budget session. Uh, this was your first time as budget chair. What what was yeah. the hardest part, and, and what was the easiest part this year of the budget? I think the hardest part of doing the budget was trying to be sensitive to the makeup of the council and that um, some of the council members have young children, so not yes. to go late into the night or who has responsibilities that their families, you know, kind of guide their time. So um, I'm glad that we never worked a, a weekend. We never had to, although we could have, um, as well as into the night. We probably had just a couple of days that we went, you know, like maybe 5.30, 6 o'clock. Uh, but in most, in most cases, you know, we ended, you know, during the week, Monday through Friday, and, you know, had like 5, five o'clock or something. We ha- had like kind of like a normal schedule. I think it was appreciated by uh, many. Um, and then the the fun part that we did is we got to go back out into the community and hear from the community direct, directly. So pre-COVID, that was kind of the standard. But when right. COVID hit, every, you know, we, we took everything online. So we went to every single um, um, district um, from for the council members and heard from their community what the problems were. And so, right. therefore, we got educated as to what the needs are. And that was the fun part. You know, when you hear from the people, that's what, that's what we're here for, right, to represent that's people. Right. Yeah, so, but I, I would say that. And, but everybody works super hard, you know, all the council members and, and the departments. Um, I will tell you that one of the big things I'm going to try to do after doing this one year of budget or one round of budget is next year, I'm, gonna, I'm hoping to have less days. So that doesn't take us so long. I think we with we take the longest in the whole state is from, from what we hear. So we actually are learning from all the different um, um, counties as to how they manage their budget and how they do it. So it's not as long as ours, mm-hmm. but you know, but still be as in depth. So we'll, I'll see where we go, but we'll see next year in uh, in April when we start our budget. Well, I think that's amazing, and I love that you're looking forward and saying, well, first of all, huge kudos, both from the standpoint of, you know, those who on the council have family and young children they need to care for. Huge kudos for trying to uh, ensure that you weren't working really late nights and uh, for them and working on the weekends, as well as also from, from the community's perspective. I, I mean, I I remember years in the past. Sitting in the um, chambers, huh, Pam? Yeah, sitting in the chamber yeah. till the wee hours of the morning, sometimes, yeah. you know, past 12. I've been there as late as 2 a.m., um, yeah. you know, and even even during COVID times, I remember some really late nights um, on council issues, and, and, um, and I've, I've seen some models, you know, going to the National Association of Councils one time and talking to council members from across the states, and, and just, you know, I love listening to how other people are doing things and, and getting ideas, and I love that mm. you're, you know, you've kept it at that this year, which is a, a kudos to you, because that's, from what we've seen in the past, that's a huge shift, um, 
and you yeah. were able to make that work. But also love that you're continuing to talk to you know other council members across the state and and looking at how they're doing things and and looking forward to how do we streamline the process and make it efficient yeah. without losing the community mm-hmm. input. Yeah, so trying to put all that together as well as I think the important part is to hear from the departments, right? Because yes. truly, Pam, the budget comes to us um, March 25th by charter. Um, the mayor will start, in fact, he'll start soon um, developing his own budget um, that he'll be submitting for the next, you know, fiscal year. And then, um, you know, it comes to us and it's, it's, it's actually his, um, you know, his dreams of what he wants to do for the county, right? And right. then we look at it from a fiscal or financial perspective um, and then, you know, try to help implement it plus, you know, put in some of the things that we heard from our communities too. So it really yeah. is a um, teamwork effort and I look forward to working with this administration uh, um, as we as we just approved our budget in days away, you know, it's going to be July 1 and um and see where we go with, you know, their, um, with, with what they have uh, presented to us and then, you know, where the departments go for a different right. project. So, yeah. It's yeah, exciting. no, it's, it, it, it really is. Um, I think it was great to see the cooperation. Yeah and, yeah, and there was so many things, you know, if we used to track, you know, where the mayor's proposal was, where the council's proposal was, where what okay. the differences were, you know, where were we off on every single category of, of uh, real property tax, which we can talk about in a second. And, you know, it used to be a heck of a chart, but this year it was much easier. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we approved um, all, the, all of the real property tax rates that the mayor proposed. Yeah. Um, which also included a reduction in owner occupied. So, you know, it, it worked out for the homeowners here um, on on island and the residents, which I think we all are thinking the same way, right? Help our people. Um, so right. we approved that, and but we basically approved, you know, also the real property tax rates that he proposed, and we didn't go through, you know, the tail end of trying to increase rates because we added on so much to the budget. So. It, it it was a very very um, good process where we all kind of worked together, including the council members. And we really appreciate that. And we, we it was clear that everybody understood where our residents were at. Um, and it was clear, you know, we really appreciated seeing that the recognition for the, the real property valuations increasing um, yes. and recognizing that with the value, you know, with what was happening in the real estate market with, with valuations um, increasing where we were at. So how do you see you know, again, well, things have tapered off a little bit, but, you know, mm-hmm. we're, we're not seeing the, uh, the same height in sales, but we know that that's going to continue. Where do you where do you think uh, that'll go next year? You know, we're watching, right? <clears throat> um, so um, just as you heard, you know, the state government um, kind of um, narrow down and, you know, and, and watch, right, what the overall impact of the economy is. I think we're there, too. But um, by approving the budget that we did, I think that there's um, enough in there. Um, wait. Sorry. Um, you know, enough in the budget that we can work through um, the maybe difficult times ahead. But we will, you know, we will do this. Um, and, you know, we have the... Um, T transit accommodation tax. Yes. Are you still there? Yeah. Uh, we have the transit accommodation tax, and um, you know that's as good as the visitor market is. But that's something that you know helps us in the long run. Um, another thing that you know, Pam, that is before my committee today, but the Finance Economic Development Committee, is a possibility of um, a GET surcharge, a uh, half a percent. Um, which all the other counties in the state of Hawaii has already opted for it um, for four years or more, and it came because of the rail project in Honolulu, and then they extended it to the other, they mean the legislature extended it to the other counties. We, yeah. we, this is our third um, opportunity that the legislature is providing us at Maui County. We're the only ones that haven't. Um, but I'm hoping that, um, you know, we can talk this through, get community input, as well as an understanding of how this half a percent GET surcharge can be used. But going back to your question, I think that's one way 
that we can help with, you know, our economy um, being a little bit uh, frail at this point, but using this additional half a percent surcharge to pay for things, it can only be used for infrastructure of water, sewer, um, and um, also sidewalks by schools. I was glad to see that through, they threw that in um, for housing, and, you know, it'll help home buyers, right? Um, right. So hopefully the object is what the legislature wanted is that we didn't pass on the cost for infrastructure on onto developers. So this is really for housing, and um, the use of these funds are very narrow because it's for water, sewer, you know, that kind of uh, infrastructure, not for roads and um, wastewater, drainage um, can all be used, you know, a wastewater system, uh, water treatments um, can all be used with this half, per- half a percent GE surcharge, GET surcharge. And, and you know, this um, is a this is controversial. I know, uh, but not. But I want to yeah. share a couple things, and I know that you and I have talked about this, which is, you know, the Chamber of Commerce generally doesn't want to increase the general excise tax, and, and we yeah. don't want to increase taxes on businesses, and, and particularly, you know, there's people who are worried. Uh, you know, we're, we're still concerned about the possibility of a recession, and we've heard some economists lately saying, you know, normally under other circumstances we'd be in a recession, but because of spending that has continued, we're not there yet. But they worry what happens later toward the end of this year. Um, yet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We are in a housing crisis, mm-hmm. and the chamber has done two forums on housing pre-COVID. We are still in a housing crisis, and mm-hmm. we were the last county to exercise using this half percent tax. We waited as long as possible not to increase the general excise tax, um, but the legislature, and I, I commend them for recognizing and our county for saying, we have to still address the housing crisis. And it's and I know for a lot of folks and, and the, the people are saying, you know, why why is the chamber uh, supporting this? You know, we without housing, not only you know our children, and our future generations are looking at, you know, they could be looking at based on projections we had a two million dollar median home price by 2042. This is wow. something we did at our housing summit. Two million. We already exceeded the one million mark that mm-hmm. we projected mm-hmm. for 2024. So we've already exceeded the median mark. Um, and we all know from these forums that housing costs are considerably higher because the developers have been asked for years to to handle what was once handled by county and state Mm -hmm. to handle Mm -hmm. the infrastructure costs, which then they Mm -hmm. have to pass on. So by the county using this money to build the infrastructure, it's a critical component in lowering housing prices and building attainable housing for our residents. Mm -hmm. Um, So I I know there's a lot of people who, you know, um, and you were mentioning that you'd heard concerns about people wanting to exempt, you know, the general excise tax from, uh, you know, for food and health care, um, you know, for food and drugs and health care and medical expenses, mm-hmm. but that mm-hmm. the state can only do that. Yeah, and, so it's not in our, yeah, our jurisdiction. Yeah. That's one state legislature. It's not in your purview, yeah, to be able yeah, to, and we have purview. fought for that. The chamber fights for that every year and has fought every year since I, I've been a part of the chamber to try and exempt out uh, food and drugs and and medical bills because Mm -hmm. we know it hits those um, on lower income levels the most and, Mm -hmm. you know, particularly Mm -hmm. our seniors. So we've we've been working really hard on that. We haven't succeeded at the state level, and we continue to pursue it every year. Um, But, you know, I I know that uh, this is coming up. What are some of the other things that you, you know, Beyond the exemption on on those items that you can't do, because that's a state issue Mm -hmm. and has to be done Mm -hmm. at the state level, are there other real concerns, um, you know, again, aside from also concerns? You know, businesses are going to be concerned, and we're a business organization. Um, This is a challenge. We're also Mm -hmm. the last county in the state to do this, um, but it's directed towards meeting a critical need of ours. Is there other major concerns that you're hearing on this? 
Um, probably what you addressed is is what I heard more often, you know, about can we also exempt food and, and medical and medical expenses, health care. And we, we do not have that authority. The county of Maui does not. That's the legislature. Um, and, you know, it is um, a tax for everyone. So it's not like we can say, oh, this is only for the visitors or this is only for this group of people. It's, right. You know, it's for it's, GT is paid by, you know, everyone. And so this tax, this half a percent GT, um, would be, you know, for everyone, um, this, this half a percent um, surcharge. So, and, and, you, and they'll now have, so for those who are paying into the general excise tax, it, it does also now get reported on your taxes as well. So our, for businesses, your tax forms are going to change. Now you're, now like the other neighbor islands, you're going to need to report that part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, it'll be, you know, all include, uh, inclusive, right? Um, and the good thing about this is the state tax, the state deal, uh, State tax office is going to collect the tax for us, and they'll send us a check every month. Is what we hear. They'll be monthly um, set up. The Department of Finance will, you know, if this does pass, they'll set up a special fund for it, and then the administration would utilize it for projects that are eligible. And um, I, 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 um, I speak about exactly what you said, right? To take care of expenses today, so it doesn't get passed on to our children and grandchildren. Um, by, you know, having to bond things, which is like a charge card. Um, and we can def- definitely do that because our bond rating is very strong. But um, the Central Maui Wastewater Reclamation Facility is um, a project that uh, the mayor and the Department of Environmental Management are doing, which will put in the uh, wastewater system in Waikapu, um, right. as well as the decentralizing of the Kahului Wailuku um, wastewater system, which all you know, all you know is down by you know Kanaha Beach Park, and right. it's right on the ocean. And so all of us right now in Central, you know, use that um, as our system, our primary system. And so we're the departments are building um, a new wastewater system and, and going through the planning process, which you know is you know a lot. But just the cost on that, the estimates that we received at my last meeting was just hundred million, a little over hundred million dollars just to do that. And so right. this um, this half a percent GET surcharge, according to what we heard from uh, Scott Tarui, our director of finance, he checked back with state tax office. And if we would have um, participated in this from twenty nineteen when we could have, all the way to um, twenty twenty two, we would have gotten received two hundred and eighty five million dollars from this half a percent wow. GT surcharge. And it's about $71 million, um, from, you know, average during those four years. So it can add up to a significant amount of money and can contribute to, that was a, you know, example of, you know, one project that is pretty important. Um, and if we are talking about housing, that um, the projects that are being approved, like the um, Waikapu Country Town project, where the Maui Tropical Plantation is, that's about right. 1,400 homes that will be coming up and will be relying on this um, new wastewater reclamation facility, um, you know, in the long run, but tie into the Kahului one um, in the short term. Um, there's an agreement, you know, uh, for that to happen. Um, but, I mean, that's how important these projects are because it, it, it's a, something that we have to do and somebody's going to have to pay for it. And I believe that this would be another revenue source so that we do not have to bond this, um, although we could bond it, and we'll just, you know, amortize the expense over, you know, 20 years, right. or 30 years, depending on how long the, you know, bond is good for. But, you know, cash is king, and if we can, you know, utilize this half a percent G surcharge, if it, does, if it does get approved, that would be a good use for it, you know. So. Absolutely, and you know, unfortunately, it, it, well, one, I'm glad that you mentioned that if, if we had taken advantage of it earlier, we we would have had the money to completely pay for it. And I think a lot of people forget. And you and I have worked in economic development for many years, so to have one mm-hmm. harbor, <laughs> you know, one commercial harbor, and then to have our sewage system so close to mm-hmm. the commercial harbor, and we're all seeing climate change. And we know that um, if anything happens to that, we're going to have really severe needs. 
if our sewage mm-hmm. system goes down. If we have any kind of environmental emergency until we have a new system up and uh, and uh, running and established, that's that's a world of hurt. We've, we've been skirt, sort of very skating <laughs> from, like, an insurance yeah. perspective. We've really been skating for decades um, with, you know, both you know, constantly increasing capacity, um, but, you know, just to have it in the location that it's in is, is challenging, um, not when it was first put there, but, uh, you know, it... For a long time, that's been a huge worry from a, yeah. you know, a, a sustainability standpoint. So I'm gl- this is really an important vehicle for funding uh, that new project as well as the housing that comes with it. And the other thing is, and I just wanted to touch on it because you mentioned it, which is that this is a tax that, that hits everybody, right? It, yeah. It's not a targeted tax on visitors like TAT, mm-hmm. but... It hits everybody, meaning that because of our strong visitor industry, you know, if we didn't have that industry, we wouldn't have those people paying into this part of the general excise tax Mm -hmm. as well. So we get a great bump from the visitor industry. Um, it's another way to to leverage that economic engine to continue to support desperately needed community projects in terms of infrastructure and housing. Yes. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, yeah, I you, you know, this is coming up today. I'm sorry. Yes, it's, on, it's in my committee this morning at 9 o'clock. Um, okay. And then, yeah, so people come and, te- you know, come and testify. And then um, I'm also, um, you know, if we don't finish this bill today um, then um, or vote on it today, then I'm trying to schedule a um, meeting next week, Monday, um, to have a public night, evening meeting so that we can hear from the community. So right. that's in the works, you know, before we um, take a vote on it. So we'll see what the members want to do. But, um, yeah, it's a, it's a very big decision, very big decision. So. Yeah, because it's, you know, you, you don't see taxes reversed very often. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> or ever. I'm, I'm, but, I can't think and, of an instance. <laughs> yeah. And, and the, the thing about this tax, though, I like to say that it's, it's not, this one is not going to be, Offer to us forever because it'll sunset in 2030. So it's only going to be from January 1, if it does pass um, this council, it'll be January 1 of next year, 2024, and it'll sunset in 2030, December 30. Oh, good 2030. point, yes. Yeah. yeah, so yeah. it's not, it's not uh, forever taxed in that way, um, but it's only being offered, you know, to us for this short period of time if we, you know, if we take this opportunity. Um, and, I, and I'll just add another thing that I've heard, which I, I think everybody in, in government knows, but um, at the legislature this year, it was said, look, we have given Maui County multiple options mm-hmm. over the years. So you've had a number of years to take this tax. This is it. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. Don't come back to that's us a- next legislative session asking for help. Um, yeah, exactly. This is it. Yeah. So and, um, and you know and yeah and and these projects that I'm talking about, we would go to them and ask them for help. Um, for the Central Maui Wastewater um, uh, Reclamation Facility, yeah. the state has already given us 3.5 million, which we had to match. We did that to start it, um, and you know, and that's the well I would go to. You know, we need right. to help legislature, but they're giving us this, and I hope that. You know, we're able to do this because I think if we went to them and said, "Hey, we need to, we need you to give us, you know, like twenty-five million dollars, you know, for this um, this new wastewater reclamation facility," they might say, "Nope." You know, we gave you the chance and you didn't want it. I don't know. I'm, I'm making yeah, that up. Yeah, well, I, I'm hearing that they they said, you know, um, uh, it, it, in the in the and sometimes it's brought up in a fairness way as well, right? Uh-huh, that if we uh-huh. keep coming and asking, well, other counties are not asking because they took advantage of the tax that that uh, the state allowed yeah. them to do. Yeah, and so they're yeah. saying to <laughs> us, you know, why does Maui County keep asking? We, you know, and refusing to take advantage of the vehicle that we gave them to help them fund these critical needs. So. Oh. It's yeah. I, I think, and, I, and I've seriously heard people say, "Okay, if not now, you know, we're, we're giving, we've given you chances each year for the last several years. Uh, if not now, <laughs> then uh, stop it. Don't don't come yeah, it's, again." Yeah, it's, it's true. 
So Yeah. So it's important wow. to recognize sometimes we don't hear about that other work and, and the work that our Maui delegation also has to do to help continue to secure this option to, that they've been doing to help continue to secure yeah. this option for us. I know. We're we're so lucky, right? We have Gil Agaron, Peter Agaron. Uh, we have, you know, Representative Yamashika and Troy Hashimoto, and these guys are, you know, our advocates out there. And um, hard to always ask when they, you're right, they give us a vehicle, and if we don't do it, then it would be really hard for them to, you know, try to speak in our behalf, right? So there's some yeah. important juggling going on here. <laughs> Yeah, really important. Yeah. Well, let, uh, we've got a little bit more time. I'd like to talk about another one, you know, one other item today, and I'm so glad that we got to cover this because this is coming up in your committee today. So, people, if you're not yeah. familiar to how to log on, just go to the county website, and, and you can pr- find out how to connect in with the – you can show up. <laughs> or watch on a kaku. You can watch or watch on a kaku. Not our movie, but our movie <laughs> on, on a kaku. Yeah. Yeah, and testify. Um, but – you know, another critical thing that we we heard so much about, which was economic diversification. We have to mm-hmm. diversify our mm-hmm. economy. Just could you talk a little bit about some of the bigger initiatives um, in the FY24 budget that yeah. you would uh, that you feel help address these critical efforts? Yeah. So one of the things which is your passion, um, support of Made in Maui uh, County Festival, right? That's that's one of your things. So well, you know, we love Ma- that. <laughs> And our, our <laughs> ROI is excellent on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, small business promotions, right? So yes. um, the Office of Economic Development is hopping and popping and doing all kinds of, you know, getting their grants in early. Um, and we have put in there um, small business promotions, the Made in Maui Festival, um, Council of Native Hawaiian Advancements for the Pop-Up Makeke, you know, project. Mm-hmm. So that's still in there, as well as technology and um, business promotion. And on agriculture, which has became, you know, was uh, is a critical focus during COVID, right, when everything, all the visitor industry shut down, um, the, the you know, I think it's three years now, $3 million was put in, well, 2.5, I think, the first year. But anyway, this year we put in $3 million for agriculture micro-grant programs. Um, and it's administered by the uh, Maui Maui Econo- MEO, Maui Economic Opportunity, and um, 2.5 million for agriculture education and promotions program, and then um, Kula Ag Park. So, um, 20 million dollars were put in, uh, 10 million from the legislature with a uh, 10 million match from um, Mayor Bisson uh, yeah. for the Kula Ag Park for its completion of the second. Um, second ag park, right? So the first ag park is it, ag park is um, the one that we always think about, but there was an additional 262 acres that were purchased, and that's just sitting there. So this is um, this right now fencing is going on, going up there um, at the Kula Ag Park. But in terms of diversification, the second ag park um, that will be completed with this 20 million, um, as well as some water that's needed. Um, so that's you know that would be a huge extension of you know our economy and diversification, you know feed our people, um, which I think is really important. Yeah. So. No, I think yeah. absolutely, and it's something that again we've talked about um, imports for years. Our our ability to do you know we've got the land, uh, <laughs> we've got this beautiful environment to to produce yeah. crops in. Um, and uh, you know the 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 big thing I hear hampering us there is is worker shortages. So <laughs> we're, yeah. we're we're talking to I people know. about programs and how we can we help on worker shortages. It comes up at the chamber a lot, but um, but I appreciate yeah. the strong support. And yeah. you know I really also want to say and appreciate. Um, you know, the Made in Maui County Festival is is uh, something that we continue the chamber continue to put in a grant for, but. It really leverages, it's a bridge between agriculture and the visitor industry. Mm. Um, uh, yes, our local community loves and, and is the backbone and supports our locally mm. manufactured products and our agricultural industry and does an amazing job doing that and, and really um, investing in our community that way, keeping those dollars circulating here. But mm. we're able to really also sustain those industries because of our visitors. And visitors 
not only when they're here do they cherish buying locally made products, but as we saw during COVID and when we couldn't do the festival live, they're still shopping online and buying them remotely. Yeah, um, that was some and, of the benefits of COVID, huh? We learned. Yeah. So much. It, it was a it was a great outgrowth, but we're continuing to to prime that pump and keep that going and to expand our mm-hmm. networks and to expand the wholesale buyers who registers because many of our companies go from small companies to bigger companies because of the wholesale contacts they make. But it's also a way to take our agricultural products. This has been a long dream of the Farm Bureau, as well as is to how do we take agricultural products and give them a longer shelf life by Mm. preserving them um, and giving them a a different way to be packaged and sold so that we can also not only have great produce for us, uh, but we can also then create additional expanded products and generate additional income here in Maui County. Mm. So really excited about that. And and one of the things that we took up to Hawaii on the Hill, we just came back from Hawaii on the Hill Mm, in D.C., was venison jerky. And it was mm-hmm. people were raving about the venison jerky, which is oh. which was taking combined meat products from Maui County, venison from Maui County, and and uh, and putting it into great venison products. And Jake Muse and and uh, his group have, have been amazing, doing venison huh? jerky for a long time. He sort of led the way. Others are now doing it. Um, but you know, really excited about those opportunities. And I see you've got a, uh, we've got a task force meeting coming up in June twenty seventh, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So excited to yeah. be continuing to work on that, uh, which yeah. you led the charge on to get that established. Uh, Yuki, thank you for all you do. Thank I, you I very much. I really um, enjoy working with you on so many yeah, different things, too. but appreciate your leadership and your broad reach into the community. I appreciate you too, Pam, and all you're doing with the businesses and it's such a, you know, small businesses, large businesses. You're a big voice for us, so. Thank you very much. Um, oh, thank you. Me. It's our pleasure. I will be talking to you soon and, and probably seeing you uh, maybe later today, um, but definitely on the 27th. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but, yeah. All uh, right, great. Ten sending o'clock you the, great yeah. blessings yeah. and have a g- wonderful okay. day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Aloha. Always a great pleasure to talk story with Yuki. Um, we're going to take a quick break. Uh, to hear from our sponsor, Mokulele Airlines, and then we're going to connect with Marvin Moniz. Mokulele Airlines operates the largest commuter airline hub in the country, right here in Kahului. Fly Mokulele from Kahului to Molokai, Manai, Hana, Waimea, Kona, and now Hilo. Mokulele also operates the only flights between Kapalua and Honolulu. There is never a middle seat on Mokulele, and every seat has a window and aisle. Visit MokuleleAirlines.com and take your next flight from the newly renovated Mokulele Terminal. While uh, Gary's connecting with Marvin, I wanted to take a moment to introduce Marvin. He became the airport's district manager for the state of Hawaii Department of Air, uh, Transportation, Airports Division, Maui District. You should see this title in November of 2007, um, and and it gets all shortened to what they call the ADM. But um, as the uh, airport's district manager or ADM, he is responsible actually for six airports in the Maui district located on the three different islands in the state of Hawaii. So he has a very unique role as an airport's district manager in the state. And those airports include Kahului, Molokai, Lanai, Hana, Kapalua, and Kalapapa. Um, His office is located at the Kahului Airport, and prior to being the airport's district manager, Marvin worked in the airline industry for 23 years, uh, starting, you know, as a baggage uh, baggage handler for Hawaiian Airlines back in the 1980s, and then he held many different positions with Hawaiian Airlines, including flight operations, uh, having covering things like airport weight and balancing and dispatching functions. Imagine that. Um, and later went on to the ranks of management, opening service for Hawaiian Airlines in Phoenix, Arizona, and a few other West Coast cities as their station manager. He then returned to Maui, thank God, as the station manager of operations for them here and retired in 2006 before then joining the State of Hawaii Department of Transportation. So 
we are so thrilled to have Marvin with such an amazing experience here on Maui. And also, he served from 1977 to 1989 in the Army Reserves and currently sits on the board for the Maui Visitors Bureau and Maui Crime Stoppers. Uh, he is a treasure to our island and wealth of information, and we're thrilled to have him on the show this morning. Are you there, Marvin? Yes, I am, and, and good morning, time and aloha, Maui. Good morning. Aloha. Well, I am so thrilled to have you on our show again. You are a very busy person. <laughs> We're just watching all of the different flights and some of the, the price drops that they're saying are going to bring a lot more people in over the summer. Um, what is the summer traffic looking like? Yeah, you know, Pam, interesting you asked that. I was just was speaking yesterday with uh, some of the airline managers and Kind of looking at their uh, forecast for the summer, and you know, it it, it it's close to the pre-pandemic levels. Um, there's been some uh, recently some uh, reduction in airfares among the carriers, and uh, so I, I think we'll see something similar, if not pretty close to our pre-pandemic numbers. Uh, there's been a lot of good deals out there, and uh, I think uh, sooner or later we'll see some hotels and perhaps even the rental cars uh, extending some deals for the summer. But yeah, it, it looks good so far. Good. Well, I know that uh, in the past our communities had some concerns. Uh, I've been watching the news as we also try and talk about regenerative tourism and new models of tourism. So I know there was some uh, some concerns in the past with uh, the the really deep discounted deals where we were getting a different kind of crowd. Uh, but I know there's a lot of work going on on how to address that, so I'm, I'm sure they're working on it very closely as we're seeing some mm-hmm. of that, but good to know that the numbers are picking up and and that we're still looking at something close to 2019, which is fabulous. Um, there were also some delays that we were hearing about going through TSA last year, and I know that you folks were working to address that. How has that been going? Yeah, you know, there's a few things that we got going, and uh, one of them is that uh, we are in the final stages of our uh, design and going out to bid for our new checkpoint um, project. So what that'll do, it'll separate, it'll probably reduce the the lines by about 50%, because if you're flying out of the south end of the terminal, uh, you'll have a separate checkpoint. If you're flying out from the north of the Paia end, you'll have a separate checkpoint, but you know, we're still a, probably a little over a year away on, on uh, completion or maybe even two. Um, but in the meantime, we have worked with TSA and we've uh, got the canine program going now. So what that does is it helps us expedite with the screening process here at the checkpoint. And I think most of you know um, those lines can be <laughs> horrendous at times. But I think now that we've got the canine program in place, we also... Uh, have taken an exit, uh, the main exit, and created uh, two lanes there as well. So, you know, we're up to about nine lanes for processing passengers, both wow. standard and pre-check. And uh, we're also in the works currently um, with CLEAR uh, to introduce their program. So there's a few programs that have been put in place to help expedite the process. So um, we're looking forward to getting that rolled out soon, um, at least with the CLEAR program. Pre-check is added that lanes already, so I think um, we've seen a reduction in the wait times there. i, I got to tell you, because I remember that, that the, one of the big things we were talking about is if you were pre-checked, this new CLEAR program was really going to help expedite things. Um, I just came back from Washington, D.C., and the biggest line that I thought, oh, I, I didn't even really look, to be honest with you, I thought this has, has to be um, just the regular line. I'm not, I still haven't gotten pre-checked. Mm-hmm. And it was actually the pre-check line was longer in Washington, D.C. <laughs> yeah. than the regular line. <laughs> it's gotten popular. <laughs> yeah. So, so um, I'm glad that you, when we start heading that way with more people going pre-check, including myself, I will get there one day, um, to know that there there is going to be ways to expedite it. But I thought that was hysterical to just you know, compared to at home, usually our line is the longest if you don't have pre-check. So that was really interesting to see. What are some of the, um, how are we doing on construction projects, and what are some of the projects you're still working on? Yeah, you know, we've got some good good projects coming up. You know, we've, we've uh, got some funding, and we're looking at the, uh, the 
president's infrastructure program that'll help us with some funding as well. But, you know, if if you haven't been down here in a little while, the uh, south side of Kihei concourse, if you will, um, we've upgraded that hold rooms with new carpeting. We've took out that long hallway that you remember walking down. Yes. And now we've created an all hold room environment. Um, that'll make it a lot easier to move through. We've added a few concessions in there. There's still one more phase left that's closest to the the uh, middle of the the concourse, and um, that's probably going to run us about another nine to ten months. So um, we're hoping to expedite that process. But we're halfway done on that concourse. Um, nice. We also created uh, an outside patio, if you will, a holding area. Uh-huh. That, um, you know, the residents and, and visitors will be able to sit down outside and get a view of the mountains uh, while waiting for their flights and also uh, relax in the open air environment. So that's coming along. Um, we also just recently completed replacing all the baggage carousels in the baggage claim. Yes. You know, they were all aged, so now they're all brand new and, and hopefully um, very reliable. And um, I think that'll give the passengers a little bit better experience coming in that we'll have all five of them up and running and all modernized. So uh, that's moving along. Um, we've got uh, the uh, design for a new ticket lobby and um, curbside. That's about, I want to say about 75%, maybe 70% design completed. Hoping to look at perhaps starting some of that work uh, mid-2024. So... Um, and then we've recently completed a water scalping project. So we're taking about 60 to 75,000 gallons of water, wastewater, and converting it to R1 water. So that'll help us with our irrigation. We can get off the, uh, the uh, potable or even the uh, practice water system, and we'll just go with all R1 water. So we're excited about that. I think we're about a month away from launching that uh program so yeah we got that we got some runway resurfacing coming up and um you know i think um there's a lot of uh inner office uh renovations going on among the carriers and some of it ourselves so yeah we got a lot going you really do um i again coming just coming going and coming back from washington dc and going through multiple airports and so <laughs> getting to compare yeah. along the way um, but no, the construction underway at our airport is phenomenal. Uh, so many upgrades. The baggage claim was great. Um, I struggled the baggage claim, but it wasn't because of the equipment. It was because um, when they transferred my bags from one flight to another, they didn't take it to the next flight. So I was waiting in line at baggage claim five when the Chicago earlier flight um, I should have been a baggage claim for, but that that's a minor issue to have. <laughs> so, uh, you know, that's that's more about the announcements and things but uh, that the, the airlines need to give. But uh, the machinery looked amazing. I mean, uh, baggage claim, you know, to see all that new equipment was phenomenal. And also to see the way that we're building out and making it easier for people. Um, you know, we, we are... We are a small rural airport, but we're getting more functionality and convenience like some of those bigger airports. And it's really tremendous, great work that you and your team are doing. Um, Another thing we heard about that I just thought I'd mention is at one point there were some issues with like churro cars illegally parking at the main lot and causing some parking issues. Um, And I'm wondering how that's going. Yeah, you know, we had some some challenges with with Turo and, um, you know, like everybody else, you know, trying to make a living and get in their business going. And, and, you know, we understood that um, the challenge we had with that was operating a business um, out of a parking lot where we were uh, having challenges with the local residents and even some of the visitors trying to get a parking stall for a day or a few days and went to, you know, other islands or off-island or to the West Coast. So we, you know, we, we worked with them and said, hey, you know, we've got to look at a, an area off the airport. Um, you know, they started getting some vehicles getting stolen, and unfortunately, um, you know, these lockboxes and all of that. So we worked with, real closely with MPD, and uh, hats off to MPD because, um, you know, they put a lot of hours in along with airport police trying to combat these uh these uh, break-in entries to these vehicles, so mm-hmm. it, it it it's 
gotten a lot better now. I think, um, you know, people are aware now, hey, let's not run a business here. Let's not park a tool car. So they were able to get some off-property uh, uh, used parking lots that they now operate out of them. I think some of them are near Costco. So it's kind of working out a lot better for them now. So, and then, of course, you know, we've, we've not ran into the three-day weekend or even the holidays uh, parking issues since we've created a lot more uh, public parking. So, yeah, it, it's... It's simmered down, and I think other airports around the state have had similar challenges. I think Kauai and Kona has similarly, they're fighting what we went through <laughs> a couple months. Yeah. But, uh, well, you know, like you said, <laughs> entrepreneurial solutions, um, <laughs> but also, you know, so not unique to us, but um, unique to the environment and COVID times, watching Turo just grow exponentially during those times, but thrilled to hear that you've worked with MPD and want to do a shout out and thank MPD for working with the, you and the airport police on that, um, because again, it, it was hampering residents who were trying to go away for, like you say, three-day stays or leave their car there, and, and uh, you know, we've got a, still a, a limited space for that in parking, so glad to hear that that's less of an issue, and, and also, you know, it's important, and we always say this at the chamber, um, we represent businesses, but we want businesses to stand by business ethics and understand the impact on the community. So glad that that's been sorted out um, yeah. and and found that you folks have kind of gone above and beyond to find a new space for them to do allow that activity in yeah. a way that's not harming the community. So that's fantastic. Let me ask one quick question, Marvin, and, and I don't know if you'll if you've had any new word on this, but I saw in the news this morning again. People are wondering about the return of Japanese visitors. Do you have any quick update or on that? Yeah, you know, for 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 Maui or for most of the neighbor islands, the Japanese market hasn't been uh, where it was years ago, and uh, it looks like I don't think we'll see any uh, improvement in the Japanese market. I, I would say we would see some sort of a pickup with probably by mid to end of 2024. I would believe um, we'll see that market come back. So. Uh, in the meantime, you know, we're we're heavy on West Coast traffic. And, of course, you know, with these flights that we got from Dallas and, and Denver, you know, has contributed to uh, our arrivals. But, yeah, I don't think we'll see Japan or, or Asia market till 24. Awesome. Well, I appreciate knowing that. It may not be what we want to hear, but it's what we need to hear so we can plan forward. So yep. thank you for sharing that. Marvin, thank you for joining us on Business Matters. To all who are listening, we appreciate you joining in today. Uh, we look forward to having you join us again next Tuesday. Just want to send blessings and best wishes for a beautiful Maui day. Ahoy ho! Ahoy ho!